Hi everyone, Sean Humphreys here. Welcome to the presentation, Cultivating Resilience in Work and Life. And of course, resilience is something we do want to cultivate in both spheres. You know, in our personal lives, when relationships are going well and life generally is going well at home or in our communities, we can bring more to the work or professional experience. And vice versa, if we have at work challenges and um, relationships aren't going well and we're stressed out, we bring that into our personal lives and that has a negative impact. So it really um, behooves us to look for ways to cultivate resilience so that we can be productive in both spheres and that has a profound impact on almost every aspect of our lives. So um, we're going to talk about some of the character qualities of resilient people how they think and what they do to cope with challenging circumstances that come up in their lives. This is a great chart. On the bottom left hand side um, we have our current location and then the destination point is in the top right corner of that circle in the blue and of course you have this chaotic series of arrows that are there to really I guess demonstrate or illustrate this notion that there's challenges and we can go off in tangents and we think we're going one direction but we get headed very quickly into a different direction um, and life's like that isn't it you know in, in work there can be budget constraints there could be economic downturns there could be tax or regulatory changes at home there could be relationship issues and challenges with the, you know our parents possibly that are aging I mean you name it things can come up so we set these goals in different areas of our lives, both personally and you know at work and professionally. Um, but it's not a straight line journey. We have to navigate through all these different issues. Again, what we call inertia. So the notion of resilience and the cultivation of resilience is to try to get through these issues uh, relatively unscathed. That we don't allow these just ongoing, regular um, distractions and challenges to derail us from our intended destination down the road. And then finally, as an opening comment, it's important that we take into account our energy capacity. And this is a reality for most people. If you look at this quadrant, um, on the bottom left-hand side, you can see a brown line, and that's designed to represent our responsibilities. And those tend to go up as we age, right? We maybe get married, have a family, uh, pursue career aspirations. Um, aging parents come into the situation, uh, kids launching into their careers or university. And so all these things come up and there's increasing responsibilities and pressure. The red line is designed to demonstrate you know, our energy capacity. And so once you get into your 40s, unless you're really intentionally looking after yourself, there can be this diminished in, you know, energy that, um, that we have. And you can see there can be some intersection points where the amount of energy that we can bring to a situation may be less than the actual responsibilities that we have. And that's, that's a danger zone. So the idea of resiliency training and having these attitudes is to push through this natural kind of energy depletion and responsibility increase and try to push back this, this period in which one exceeds the other. So it's very important that we be mindful of this. It's always hovering in the background. And some ground rules. Um, for all of us, the journey is unique. There's no one size fits all. It's never too late to start. Sometimes we get a little bit disheartened because we have a lot of time as we look back uh, at our lives that we had wasted and hadn't gotten, gotten really engaged in some issues that we thought we probably should have and now we regret that we haven't done that. But it's never too late to start. Baby steps work best. Don't try to chew off too much at one point in time. Um, just little incremental steps are ideal and have an open mind as you look at various ways of solving some of your resiliency challenges. So let's talk about some of those traits. So resilient people have four qualities and um, first quality we'll talk about is their task orientated in their coping style. So you know sometimes some people that are confronting challenges um, they kind of get down, they become internally um, focused, they disengage from relationships, maybe they stay at home, maybe they sit on the couch watching too much TV and eating too much junk food, but they, they, they don't really get engaged. But resilient people really do strive to cultivate this, this coping style, which is task, or I'll call it action oriented. In other words, they'll right away default to go, okay, what are some specific things that I can begin doing goals I can establish to help me get through this challenging time. That's their default and that's what we need to do to mimic that 
that particular coping style. It's not to um, regress, not to isolate ourselves, not to disengage, but to actually get engaged and begin drafting that list of things that we can begin doing to try to shape or change or get past this very difficult time. So so action, becoming task-oriented, really helps in many different ways. It helps us cognitively, it helps us emotionally to feel like we're, we're making some positive movement towards uh, change and getting through the difficult time. Now, they also take incremental, incremental purposeful actions. And again, probably sounds pretty straightforward, but once they develop that task oriented coping style and have a list of things that they want to act on, they begin acting on that list and they begin every day working towards these particular tasks very purposefully every day doing something, incremental movement every single day. There's a tenacity, there's a perseverance about it. And they know there's a lot of things in their life that they can't control, but what they can control in that moment are these little baby steps every day to get through these difficult times, challenging times, times when they're pursuing goals. They have a belief that they have control over outcomes. So again, it's very easy when we face difficult times is to get down, to get depressed, to feel that we have no control, um, the world's just too big and, and scary. But the reality is, you know, we do have control. We have control over our emotions and the actions we take. And resilient people do believe that no matter how bad the circumstances are, they can can influence for the better in some way. They don't give up that hope. And so every time they purposefully do something, they believe it's it's moving them in the direction of having some influence over the circumstances that they are experiencing. It's a very important internal trait you need to cultivate. They have a strong, uh, strong connections to other people. And again, this wouldn't be surprising. Resilient people have developed the idea to purposely develop networks and they have relationships and they cultivate deep relationships. And those relationships become extremely, extremely important when you go through difficult times because people can be a sounding board. They can give you emotional support. Um, they can just be there to offer resources in some ways. So resilient people are resilient because they've built a network of close relationships. They're functioning as part of a community. And the worst possible thing you could do when you're going through a difficult time is to retreat and become isolated. And then you don't have the support of those relationships in your life. Now, resilience as well, as well, we need to uh, be very mindful is not, is not just re reactive. And what I mean by that is we often think of, okay, some calamitous event takes place in our lives, and then we pull out our resiliency skills and we get through it. But resilience also implies that we're, we're proactive. In other words, we actually use our skills of resilience to reach out in, into areas that will improve ourselves, to challenge ourselves, to... Um, to really go out and try new experiences that will develop our, our abilities. Um, the connection between growing resilience and reaching out is, is critical. So we do know that resilient people tend to rather, again, retreat and become very, you know, isolationist. They tend to reach out, whether it's reaching out in terms of new relationships, reaching out in terms of new experience, reaching out in terms of new knowledge, reaching out in ways that will challenge them. To be better and more effective uh, people, and you know some of the comments that you know you've heard in the research, and I've heard in the research, is when people really focus on those things, they they feel like they are stronger, more confident as you focus on these skills. They they feel more connected to other people. They feel like their skin's a little bit thicker. In other words, when people give them comments, they will you know take it as a constructive feedback. They may not always agree with it, but they won't have a meltdown or become defensive or um, get really emotional because someone doesn't you know, agree with your perspective or what you've done. So the connection between, you know, growing resilience and reaching out is, is critical. Uh, reaching out is um, important to do, but before you do it, resilient people do have a, a sense of um, assessing risks. In other words, you want to reach out and try new things, but you want to be smart about it. Um, you want to understand yourself really, really well, because if you're not reflective and you don't understand your own unique abilities and temperament and skills and experiences, you could uh, put yourself in a situation that uh, could be harmful. It may not be a positive experience. So there's a certain amount of wisdom here about reaching out and, uh, and putting yourself in a situation that will develop you and, and push you and grow you. And 
resilient people use these experiences to find meaning and purpose. Um, there's a lot to be said for traditions and rituals and habits and just doing things the same way on a regular basis. It it does mean we have to think less and um, and you know it saves the energy that we don't use to make decisions all the time for a higher creative kind of acts. But in saying that, when you push yourself into a reaching out mode, um, you can find new ways of, of cultivating purpose and meaning. And resilient people are constantly doing that because if you're not reaching out and getting engaged in life, that sense of meaning and purpose can slide and resilient people are attentive to that risk. And they're comfortable expressing their thoughts and feelings. And so resilient people are able to cultivate something that's very, very difficult uh, in our culture. So we live in a culture where people are often afraid to speak their mind. And, and even if you speak your mind, there is a, there's a real skill set around communicating in such a way that you speak your mind, you communicate clearly, you share your thoughts and feelings and your emotions, but you do it in such a way that's respectful and um and and done in a way that doesn't alienate relationships it takes a lot of emotional iq you know it takes a lot of social iq in terms of the ability to express yourself clearly to let people know where you stand to do it in a way that supports your personal resilience but also supports the people around you and there's all kinds of materials out there that you know will instruct you courses you can take um, but it's a very very important thing because when people don't communicate um, internally they start simmering and then get defensive and then you see blowouts and in, in hurt feelings and people are misunderstanding one another because there was never clear and effective communication so you know when you look at resilient people they've really cultivated this notion of you know reaching out building relationships clear communication the ability to express thoughts and feelings and working with and through each other to get things done and that's just a critical critical skill when it comes to resilience and then finally, they appreciate what they have and what they've experienced. Resilient people are just naturally, maybe not naturally, maybe they've cultivated in some circumstances, but they, they naturally reflect and are grateful for their experiences. They're grateful for the things that are good in their life, but they're also grateful for what has come into their life and what it's taught them. And I, I know that that sounds crazy, particularly when they're really negative experiences. But, you know, life is, you know, a series of both positive and negative experiences. If you haven't experienced tragedy in your life, whether it's a death of a family member, or a loved one, or job loss, or financial problems, or whatever it might be, just wait, because eventually tragedy and, and tough times will hit you. That's that's life. I mean, life you know, throws curveballs at us. The more important question, though, is how are you going to respond to those curveballs when they do hit you? And by cultivating a resiliency, you'll be able to respond to them more effectively and then learn from them. You know, I, I've heard talks all the time about people who've gone through bouts of cancer. I haven't. Um, I can't relate to this, but you hear people go, you know what? It's the best thing that ever happened to me. And you go, how in the world would someone come to that conclusion? Well, the cancer taught them something and maybe made them appreciate what they had uh, even more. And maybe it, it shaped them personally in a way that built some wonderful character qualities and perspectives that has made their life richer. And so that's what we're getting at when we say appreciate what they have and have experienced in their life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview. Uh, we have lots of resources on our website, so be sure to go to www.takechargeofchange.com. Uh, send us an email for sure at info at takechargeofchange.com if you want more information. Uh, we do talks, regular talks um, on topics related to uh, resiliency, both professionally and uh, personally. And um, if you go to our website, there'll be lots of free content there that you can take a look at, give you tips, and um, we wish you all the best in your cultivation of personal and professional resilience.